Hello everyone, my name is Sayed. Today we are going to discuss about advantages and disadvantages of unlock signal. In the last class, we have already discussed what is unlock signal, how many different types of unlock signal we have, loop start, roll start, and also we have discussed about the signaling events. Okay, now today we are going to discuss about uh, what is advantage, disadvantage, after that uh, unlock ports we have. Unlock signal is different and unlock ports we have this one. How many different types of unlock ports we have? Okay, what is the use of that one and how we can be configure that ports? <coughs> So let's see what is the advantages of unlock signal first. Uh, required less bandwidth and low cost because so in the unlock signal, if you have a 64 kbps of the bandwidth, you can make that call. So to make one single call, how much bandwidth we require? 64 kbps. The bandwidth is enough. So in that, so that is what less bandwidth and also it's a low cost here. Okay. Next disadvantages. Wiring requirement and noise. So in an unlock signal, one single connection, we can make it only one call. One single connection, we can make it only one call. So that is what the, for an example, if it is a corporate network, if there are 100 users are there, <laughs> then 100 voice required, means 100 connections required. When there is 100 connection, 100 voice, it's very difficult to manage, right? The cabling management and also it's very difficult to understand which cable which phone is connected and everything so that is what one disadvantage and also about the noise here okay so what happened here in this one now this unlock signal it use the property of electricity okay if there is a another cable or another medium if it is using the same property so what happened when it is using the electricity, two different cables or two different medium, one side cable, another side, maybe the motor or any other electronic device. If the both it is using the electricity, uh, the property of electricity, there is a chance of it's going to attract each other. So there is a concept of EMA, electromagnetic okay. interface. Okay. So what happened because of the EMA, what happened? Okay, if it is a flowing the signal, both it can be attract each other. When it is attracting each other, what happens? It creates a disturbance. When it creates a disturbance, there is a no proper voice quality. If you remember on the uh, home connection, whatever earlier we were having that landline phone, there was a lot of disturbance in that one earlier. Now we don't have the kind of any disturbance in the any kind of the phone you take this one. Earlier, what happened? Drrr, something different types of sounds it was coming on the line, right? <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, guys. So that is about the noise here. These are the two disadvantages. We have this one. Okay. See, this is the cable. Can you see this one? This is earlier. Now we it's not possible to see this type of cable. Cable. Earlier, what happened? Every home, every office. Okay, when they are grabbing, taking the connection, telephone connection in the poles, you can see the multiple cables that one. Now we don't have the, like this one. Okay, that is one disadvantage. Another one is the noise. For an example, this is my source, this is a destination. So we are grabbing a cable here. When we are grabbing a cable, what happens? You take any cable, every cable will be having some limitation. Okay, until that limit is going to transmit the signal. Example, 200 meters, 500 meters is going to transmit. After that distance, what happens? Signal will be degraded. So that's the reason we are using repeaters. Okay, here also we use the repeater here, but the repeater, it is going to reboot or regenerate the signal, but a repeater is not an intelligent device. Okay, for example, now I'm getting a signal, there is another medium here, it is got attracted each other, okay, then it created disturbance. Now when the disturbance is coming to the repeater, repeater is not going to be filter the traffic, whether it's a good traffic or bad traffic, there is any disturbance. Even it's going to regenerate that disturbance and going to be sending. Okay. Again, here also it's regenerating sending. When it is reaching to the destination, what happened along with your voice also disturbance is coming here. This one. Okay. So there is no uh, the voice quality here in the analog signal. One, one connection, only one call we can make it out. Another one is a lot of noise we have this one. So this is about the disadvantages of analog mm -hmm. signal. Got it? Clear? Now what is unlock signal? So now next, how exactly this unlock signals or analog connections we are using in our 
IP infrastructure, IP telephony infrastructure or the voice infrastructure. Okay, that's what we are going to be discuss about the analog voice ports here with this one. Okay, what is this analog voice ports? Why we require this analog voice ports where we are going to be insert or configure this one. For an example, I'm having a provider. It's called PSTM, Public Switch Telephone Network. And this is my router here. Okay, now I'm grabbing one connection from the PSTM to this router. This is my router, my internal network. Okay, this is my internal network. And this is the gateway. Now from the PSTN to router, whatever the connection we have, this is the analog connection. It's a what? Analog, analog connection. When the cable we are grabbing, now it has termi it's terminating on the router, right? Means it's connecting on the router here. Now which interface we are going to use to terminate here? Which interface we are going to use here to terminate? Whenever from the PSTN, if you are getting the any unlock connection or terminating on the router, we use FXO port. We use what? FXO port, foreign exchange office. Okay. Now, internally in my office, I am having some analog phones. So whenever if I write like this, you have to understand that's an analog phone. Okay. Analog phone we have. Then fax machine I'm having. Then modem I'm having here. Okay. Analog phone. These are the analog phone. Fax machine modem. Now I want to connect this analog phone to the router. Fax machine to the router and modem to the router here. This one. Directly we can connect here this one. Okay, if you want to connect this analog phones, fax machine modem, then what interfaces you require here in this router? Then you require FXS, foreign exchange station. Got it. So FXO we use to connect to PSTN. The end devices like analog phone, fax machine, modem to connect, we use what? FXS code, foreign exchange, station. station we use here in this one. Okay, suppose you have more analog phones. There are 10, 20 analog phones you have. If you want to connect this 10, 20 or 30, the bulk number analog phones, if you want to be connect, then we have one dedicated gateway. What is that? VG series gateway. Right, VG series gateway. In that we get it what 48 ports, 72 ports. That's how we get it. That one that's a dedicated. So one. Suppose you have only very less number of phones, then we have another not ATA high density module. We have this one. If you remember that one, high density module where on your ISR uh, any router, for example, 3900 series router or 2900 series router, or the latest 4000 series router, okay? We have the voice gateway 3929. In the existing gateway, we want to connect some analog phone, then high density module you can be connected there, okay? In that one, we get, depend on the module, we get different ports on that one. Or straightforward, we can use FXS or FX for here. This is how we have the connectivity to connect the analog phones. Got it? Okay, now, in the analog voice ports, there are different analog voice ports we have, but very important is FXS and FXO. FXS, it is used to connect to the end device like analog phone, modem, fax machine. FXO, it is used to connect to the PSTM. Yeah. Similarly, that FXO, we have the another port also here. ENM, ear and mouse, earth and magnet, you can call it ear and mouse or earth and magnet. Okay, then also we have the comma, centralized automated message accounting. Uh, okay, comma port, we have this one. See, FXO, ENM, comma, these three different ports we use to connect from the router to PSD. Okay, but comma and ENM, we are not using much here. Okay, we'll concentrate more on only FXO and FXS here. Okay, now also, in a few countries, few organization, especially like banking system, they are using this FXS and FXO. Few. Okay, not in everywhere. 
few organization, especially on the financing related organization. Okay, for the security reason, they don't want to go with some other things. Already, uh, they are using the analog connection, but very less that one compared to that one. Uh, not even less than one percent that one. Still, we have the FX and FX connection. Clear? Got it. Now, what is the analog voice ports? Now, all these ports, FXS, FXO, ENM, Kama. These are the analog voice ports. Clear? <clears throat> so analog signaling, uh, low density PSTN connectivity typically implies on the analog connection. Analog signaling is also used for the connection to analog stations such as fax machine, traditional analog phones. Okay. Then the different analog voice port used to connect different devices are. For an example, First is FXS. FXS stands for Foreign Exchange Station. It is used to connect the end device, example, analog phone, fax machine, and modem. And the connection comes, RJ11 connection comes here. Next, FXO. FXO stands for Foreign Exchange Office. It is used to connect as a trunk. It is used to connect from the gateway to PSTN. It's very simple. So, okay, then we have the ENM, ear and mouse, earth and magnet. This also it is used to connect from the router to PSTN. Yes. It's very simple. And we have different types here. The connection type T1, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5. Anyhow, nowadays we are not using that ENM. Okay, even nobody will ask. Even if you go to the interview also, nobody will ask. Yes, in an interview, there is a chance they can ask about the FXS and FXO. And one more, we have the Kama, Centralized Automated Message Accounting. This is a dedicated connection. Again, this used only in US. For example, there is a separate connection which connect to the 911 services, emergency service in the US. Whenever if you dial 911 service, okay, in this port, this connection, it carries only the emergency calls. Okay, for that, we use the Kama port. Again, this Kama port, it's designed only to be used in US, not in the other part here, other part of the country here. So that is what Kama port here. But all this FXS, FXO, ENM and Kama, these are the analog interfaces. <clears throat> Got it. So now uh, we have uh, FXS and FXO port. Okay. ENM and Kama we don't have uh, and we are not using also. So how you can configure these interfaces and why you have to be configured these interfaces that will be discussed. Example, I'm having the router. Okay. See here, you can see this one. This is the router and this is your analog phone. This unlock phone directly you want to connect on the router, then we require FXS port. Okay. Then I'm having the PBX system and I'm having a router. Then I'm having a PSTN. From the PBX to router to connect, always we use what? FXO. FXO, it is used to connect to the PSTN and PBX system. Again, see, again we are using the FXO to connect to the PSTN here. Okay. Now ENM also we can be used here. See, PBX to gateway ENM. And van connection, this one. Then again, voice gateway to PBX, ENM, we can use this one. Got it? So, this is how the connectivity comes. Okay, next is customizing the analog interfaces. By default, whatever the interfaces you have in the router, see, by default, uh, uh, yes, if it is a VG series gateway. By default, you get the analog port. If it is a 20, the ISR generation 1, generation 2, or generation 4 router, by default in router, you will not get any uh, analog, analog ports. You will not get. You have to take separate module and you have to insert on the router. Example is like this. So FXS and FXO. So if I go to the images here. Again, different model, different router, different. This is how we'll get it. Can you see the way this it is? Okay. Oops. 
can you see here this one wick show two fxs that means this is how the module you get it this is how the module you get it this module you have to insert on the router okay. any of the router again you have to be check it out which series of the router see you cannot take this interface and insert on all the modules all the series of the router for isr generation mm -hmm. only there are different module for generation two different module for generation four different module See, for example, you have 4321 router. So for 4321, which is the compatible FXS, uh, FXS you have, only that you can insert. So now there is an FXS which is designed on the ISR generation one that you want to uh, insert on the 4321, then it will not detect actually. Okay. Always what happened this one, hardware, the compatibility you have to look. Okay, what series, what version, what hardware, what software, based on that compatibility you have to insert. This is how the module we get it. Okay, you can be insert on the router. Now already we have the two gateways on the router, we have the FXS model. That one. So let's see how you can be verify that one. Okay, so I'll just go to my party. So this is my gateway, 201. Okay, so I am into this gateway here. Uh, now, I want to verify the analog interface, any analog, either it's a FXS, FXO, ENM, comma, any of the module if you have inserted on the router. So you want to know the status of that interface. You want to verify that interfaces. Before do that, if you want to verify the status of your ports, example, uh, Ethernet port, Internet, gigabit internet, ethernet or serial port or loopback inter uh, loopback interface what command you can use so I can interface show, show ip interface, interface brief. brief right so we are going to use show ip interface brief with this one what you can do see we can see gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 0 slash 1 and what is its IP address, whether it's up or down, and what is the status you can see. Another interface, we have not other than any IP address and serial interface also we have. 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 0 slash 1 we have. And another serial we have here, you can see this one, you can ignore it, this one. Okay, that's a part of ISDN actually. Generally, we will not get it, this one. Okay, that's a part of ISDN. You just ignore this one. So we'll discuss later about the ISDN. In that, you'll be discussing about this one. And, but in general, what happened? Only these interfaces. Or if you have created any loopback interface also, now we have not created. If any loopback interface you have created, it's going to be displayed at loopback interface also. Loopback interface or port channel if you have configured that one. So all that interfaces information comes under here, this one. So that you can be verified by using the executing show IP interface brief command here in this one. Got it. Now to verify, your analog interface, which command you can use? Show voice port summary. So this is the command you can use to verify your analog interfaces here. Okay, again, you can ignore this. This is related to your uh, ISDN. Now here again, we have this one, zero slash three slash zero and zero slash three slash one. This is my analog interface. Can you see this one? FXS foreign exchange station. Got it. Now I want someone to be uh, connect to unlock phones on the FXS port in the below router. Okay, so now you can see that one phone is on hook state. Okay, uh, take the cradle. Okay, I'm going to repeat this command again. Now you can see off hook. All right, on hook, off hook. So the moment you take that one, you can hear the dial tone on that one. Okay, so who is providing? The router is providing on that one. Okay, in this three, zero slash three slash zero, we have the analog here in this one. And this port you can customize. Customize means what? It's not mandatory. Customize means? It's not yeah. mandatory. That means by default, this analog interface will be having the configuration. You want to override the default configuration. You want to override the 
default configuration, you can do it. That is called customizing the analog interface. Okay. For example, you can uh, signal, you can customize CP tone, call progressive tone, ring cadence. Okay. Then no shutdown. Why? Because by default, disable. any interface in the router, it is into the disable mode. If you want to enable, then you have to give what? No shutdown. You have to give this one. Okay. This is how it can be. These are the different signal, CP tone, ring cadence. Now let's jump to the gateway here. Okay. This is my interface here. Okay. So I had to get into that interface first. Voice hyphen port. This is the command to get into that one. Voice hyphen port zero slash three slash zero. Now I am into that interface here, this one. The first we can be configured signal. In the analog signal, how many types of signaling methods we have? Two. No, that is the common that one. There are two signaling methods we have loop start and ground start signal here. By default, it is into loop start signal. Can you see the 0 slash 3 slash 0 FXS LS loop start. So now if I give the question here, which one you want to configure? Ground start or loop start? Okay, so the loop start we have, ground start we have this one. By default already loop start. For example, I'll change it to the ground start. So now you can see, I'm just repeating the command, GS, ground start. But here, this is what type of port is this? FXS, FXS always loop start. End device, whenever we are connecting, it's a loop start. The ground start we configure only on the FXO port, if it is required, or the PBX system here, this one. So now I'm going to be getting to that one. Again, I'm going to be changed to the loop start signal. Okay, that is the one. Next, CP tone here, this one. CP tone, call progressive tone. Every country, the electric signals are different in every country. Okay, for an example, in India, Whenever you are calling to any number, the, we get different tones. We get different tone. For an example, I am calling to my friend. If that phone is ringing, the ringback tone I will get as a ring only. If the phone is ringing, the ringback tone how I will get? Tring, 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 tring. This is how I will be getting here. The same call you uh, dial to the middle east. If the phone is ringing, we get long beep tone. T, T. Actually, that's a ringing. Why? Because the frequency there in the Middle East is different. The frequency here in India is different. Here is one. Depend on the country because the electric frequencies, every country, they follow the different electric frequencies. Based on that, we get that audio. Now, this gateway in which country you have place, based on that, the CP tone you have to be configured. By default, it will be having the US. Okay. Now, it has to be configured in India. 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 So, see, these are the different countries. It will be supporting here in this one. So now we can see this one, IN, India. So here you have to be configured, IN, CP tone, India. So then after, ring cadence. What is this ring cadence? For an example, on the port number 0 slash 3 slash 0, I mean to write this one, right? I have connected one analog phone. Okay. If someone is dialing to that phone, continuously the phone is not going to ring. Okay, there is a concept of on and off. On means phone will be ringing, off means phone will be silent. For example, someone is dialing, it will be ringing like this. Tring, tring, then silent. Then tring, tring, then silent. This is how what, right? So this is what the ring cadence it defines. What type of ring cadence you recommend? How many seconds it has to be ring? How many seconds it has to be off? This is what the you can be defined through the patterns here. For example, in the pattern one, we have two second on, four second off. Got it. Pattern two, one second on, four second off means it ring only for one second, four second it will be 
of so this is how whatever the pattern you want to be configured you can be configured now i'm not configuring any pattern here this one okay so this is what by default it will be having some configuration it's not required to do this configuration it's a customizing that one according to your requirement the default configuration you are, if you want to overwrite that default configuration you can do the customize then you have to give no shutdown got it so this is how you can be configured the ports you can be verified and you can be configured then after we have the another concept of timers and timing here this one you got it signal cp tone ring that is no shutdown we have done Timers also we can be configured here, this one. Okay, example voice port and get into that port. This is what timeout initial we have. What is this timeout initial? Now you are dialing the number. See, we have different types of number. Emergency number comes in three digit. 100, 101, 102, 104, 108. This is how we have. Local number comes in seven or eight digit. Uh, mobile number and national number comes in 10 digit. International number comes in 11, 12, 13 digit. Now, whenever you are dialing any number, any type of number, how the provider or the call processing device understands what type of number this user is dialing, whether the user is dialing emergency number, national number, international number, how it understands. That's not in a human being, right? But it has to be understands. There should be some logic to understand that one. How it understands? Of course, the dial plan should be there that has to be configured to match and it will be route. For an example, you are dialing only three digit. How that uh, device understand, okay, user is dialing only three digit. Or user is dialing 11 digit. Or user is dialing 13 digit. Time out initial, yes. Yeah. Whenever you dial the number, for example, my number is 9845499389. When I'm dialing the first number, from the first number to second number, or between the number, whatever you're dialing, it's going to wait for the 15 second. Within 15 second, you have to dial the second number. Then, within 15 second, you have to dial third number. Within 15 second, fourth. This is how you have to be dialed. For an example, you have dialed only 101. You have dialed what? 101. First, I am dialing 1. Within 15 seconds, immediately I am dialing 0. Again, 1 I am dialing. <coughs> After that, you are not dialing any number. It will be wait for 15 seconds. Within 15 seconds, if you are not giving any input, then it will start processing to hunt for this number. That is what timeout. How This is how it system telephone system understand that one. Okay, now I have to process only with the 3 digit. Now you are dialing 10 digit. 9, 8, 4, 5, 4, double 9, 3, 1. Something you have dialed. Okay. After dialing, again it will wait for 15 seconds. If you are not dialing, then it will be hunting for this number. It will start processing. This is what initial timeout. By default, 15 seconds. Yeah. You want to change it that timeout, you can change it. <clears throat> Got it? Okay. Next. Timeout, sorry, uh, uh, timeout initial is different. Actually, whatever I have explained, uh, I apologize for that. Interdigit is the 15th, same concept, between one digit to another digit. Timeout initial means the moment you take the cradle, you get the dial tone, right? How long it's going to play the dial tone? 15 seconds, that one. That is what initial. Okay, within that one, you have to tell the number. For example, if it is more than 15 seconds, then you get long beep, T, 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 T. After that, if you tell the number, also it will not carry that one. So that is what the timeout initial. Okay, got it? Yes. Now, interdigit is this one between the digit to digit here. Okay, timeout ringing. How long it's going to work? 240 is there, but nowadays it's not ringing for 240, only 60 seconds ringing here. Ringing means what? Someone is calling, you are not answering. How long it's going to ring your phone? 60 seconds now. Okay, earlier uh, we were having 240 mm -hmm. because olden days what happened, uh, it's very important, right? The call is very important. Connection is very important. It has, it will be ringing very long here, this one. Now what happened? We have very good infrastructure technology. Then it's reduced to the, again, you can disconnect. Again, you can make the call and multiple options we have to connect to the user nowadays. Okay, that's what. And uh, hook flash. Hook flash means 
you are into the call, you are transferring the call. How much millisecond it takes? That is what hook flash for transferring, uh, call forwarding, <coughs> uh, putting the call on hold. Okay, for that it will be using hook flash time in this one. So this is how the timers. If you want to be configured, you can be configure the timers here. This one. Okay, I'm already into that one. Uh, timeout. This is how you can configure initial, interdigit. Ringing, weight release, all this type of timers. If you want to be configured, you can configure. But I, by default, we have some uh, timers. Again, I'm not changing this one. This is called customize of your ports. Okay. The same configuration, you can do it for the FX walls. Customizing. Analog, uh, FXs and FX walk. You can get into that interface. Okay. Then you can be <coughs> customize the default configuration. Clear? Any doubts? Any questions? Show voice port summary. Uh, this is the command you can use <laughs> to see that one. Then show voice port and particular number if you give. Uh, means that number in detail about the port you'll be getting on that one. So show voice port summary. And we have seen that one. Show voice busy out. If it is the port is busy out. Show voice DSP. Uh, DSP is very important. We'll see later on that DSP part. Okay. So let's see. Show voice port summary this is we can see show voice port zero slash three slash zero that is the port right i'm having so here you can see that one this is the foreign exchange station port number zero okay so zero slash three slash zero this one and this is actually the model name vic two two fxs the hardware module we have, right? This is the actual VIC2, VIC2 voice <clears throat> interface card to two foreign exchange stations. Okay. okay. Then status is up here in this one. Uh, then, 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 then. See, initial timeout 15 seconds, interdigit 10 seconds, all disconnect timeout 60 second here, ring time 180 second here, wait till really. See, already we have here all the configuration. So that you can be look into that one, the base. Okay. So that's how we can be customized uh, for both FX1 and FXS. And it's not mandatory to the other one because by default, we'll be having some configuration. You want to override the default configuration. Again, and I'm using this word to override the default configuration. You can be customized this one. Clear? What is the unlock ports and how you can be verified status and everything? This one, all right. Any questions before we move to the next concept? Okay, the next we'll discuss about this is a very important and the major roles plays again. Here, everyone is important on the gateway, so you take any concept. Uh, every concept is very, very important here. Every and dial peer, it's very major role here. This one without dial peer, the calls will be not work. You want to receive the incoming call to send the call outside, everything the dial peer is required. Without dial peer, the gateway will not work anything. This one, so here that is what every every concept is very, very important. It's not like this one. This we can take more criteria, this we can take less criteria. We don't have this one. Okay, so what is this dial peer and why we require dial peer and how many dial peers? Again, this is important as per the interview. In the interview, they'll ask what is dial peer and how many types of dial peers we have this one. Okay, what is dial peer? How many types of dial peer we have? The interview questions. Again, I'm going to share you the uh, set four interview questions. Mm -hmm. Because already three set I have shared and the fourth set I'm going to be shared based on the gateway here, this one. Okay. So in that, you'll be getting all the Dell peer related uh, uh, interview questions, how you'll be getting on that one. So now also tomorrow we have a set to right set two, and also if you get the time, we'll discuss about tomorrow. There's a micro interview. Set three, uh, if we get the time, we discuss the answers for the and what type of cross question they'll ask in an interview and how exactly we'll discuss on that one. Okay. Oh, oh, there is very 
when a college plays an edgy voice generates style digit as a way of signaling where the call should terminate. When these digits enter a router voice board, the router must decide whether the call can be routed, call can be routed and where the call can be sent. The router uh, do by searching a list of dial peers. There is something explanation we have. A dial peer is an addressable call end point. Okay. This is a definition. You at least you remember this one. What is dial peer? Dial peer is an addressable call end point. Dial peer is an addressable call end point. And also, dial peer defines how to route the call. Dial peer defines how to route the call. Example, let me explain you. So, here the same explanation it gives in the first point, which gives the same explanation. See, this is my PSTN I'm having. Okay, then I have the ITSP also. ITSP means WAN connection. This is my router. I have a PSTN connection also. Then I have a ITSP connection also. Then internally I'm having CUCM. This is my CUCM. Then we have the IP phones. Okay, from any source, from anywhere. For an example, I'm dialing the number. The call will is hitting on the call manager. From the call manager, then call is sending to the gateway here. Now from the gateway, whether the call has to go to the PSTN or ITSP. Okay, who is going to decide? Dial peer is going to decide here. Okay, that is what? Dial peer defines via which path the call has to be routed via PSTN or ITSP. Got it? What is dial peer? Dial peer defines via which path call has to route via PSTN or via ITSP. This one. Okay. So here, if you want to route the call to the PSTN also, we have to create what? Dial peer. To route the call via ITSP also, we have to create dial peer. Dial peer, we have to create this one. This is what different types of dial peer. What is that different? We'll come back on this one. Okay, then this is the one concept. Got it? This one. Suppose if I'm getting a call from external, see, uh, I'm getting a call from the PSTN. Okay, if the call is coming and hitting here, then the call has to be go to the CUCN. This is also defined by LP. Not only for the outgoing call, even for incoming call, when the call is coming and hitting to the gateway. From the gateway, now it has to be forward or transfer that call to the call manager. In that case, again, how this gateway understand through the dial peer only this one. Clear. So now getting this one, I'm explaining in a very simple manner here. This one. Don't be confused here in this one. Okay. Now, suppose everywhere dial peer only. From the gateway to PSTN, from the gateway to ITSP, from the gateway to CUCM, dial peer only. We have this one. Okay, now if you're creating a dial peer from the gateway to PSTN, it's called POTS dial peer. It's called what? Pots. Plain old telephone system. What type of dial peer are you creating? POTS dial peer. If you're creating a dial peer to the ITSP, it is called VoIP dial peer. Voice over IP dial peer. Okay. If you are creating a dial peer from the gateway to CUCM, then again it's called VoIP dial peer. Wherever the IP address you have, through the IP address, see, from the CUCM to gateway, how we are communicating? IP through IP address. IP from the gateway to ITSP, how we are communicating? IP, IP address. Wherever the IP address comes, there we are configuring the VoIP. Now, between your router to PSTN, you don't have IP address. Unlock connection. Unlock connection, it's not an IP address. It having what signal? No, no, no. Loop start or ground start. ground start signal we have. This is the signaling we are using to connect from the gateway to PSTN. Got it? We don't have any IP address this one. So then it's a port style pair. Wherever the IP address is there, the void style pair you have to create. Got it now? What is style pair and how many types of style pairs we have this one? This is what? This is the one. So in an interview, if they ask, what is a style pair? Same answer, 
Dalpier defines via which path the call has to be rolled, via PSTN or via ITSP, if the call is coming. Or if the call is coming from the provider, then Dalpier defines to route the call to the COCN. This is for your understanding, but definition is very simple. The Dalpier defines via which path the call has to be rolled, means via PSTN or ITSP. Whenever the call is coming and hitting from the COCM to the gateway, now in the gateway, it's going to decide whether the call is routing via PSTN or ITSP that we can be do it by using the dial peer. That is the one. And dial peer also we use for addressable call endpoint. See, a dial peer is an addressable call endpoint here. This one. What exactly this addressable call endpoint? See, I am having one analog four. This is my analog four. Okay. Or you take analog phone, fax machine, modem. Then you can connect this phone to directly to the router, right? So when you are connecting this analog phone directly on the router, which interface we are using? FXS, foreign exchange station. Okay, when you have a foreign exchange station, this is only the phone, just we have connected on the port here. Then someone wants to reach to this phone, how they can reach? The required extension. Extension, dial, extension, dial number we required, right? We don't have any number here, this one. Now, if you want to assign the number, that can be assigned by using this dial here. Example, I want to configure this number as 9001. I want to assign the extension to this unlock phone, this port FXS 9001. How I can configure that one? By using dial here. Got it? Clear? Call manager, what you the No, sir. Now, unlock phone, we are not connecting to the call manager, right? We are connecting on the router. There itself, we can configure. But if there is something... The VG series, that is a different concept we have. On the router directly, if you want to be... If you want to be configured, that you can configure. Okay, so that's how the we have a dial peers and different types of dial peer. This is what the dial peer we have. This was clear. <coughs> Next, we'll discuss about uh, different types of okay. Dial peer defines how in which path call has to route. These two points you just check it out. A dial peer is an addressable call point, and dial peer is in which and how the call has to be routed. Here, this one. Okay, there are five types of dial peer, but very important only two dial peer. So the ports play an old telephone system. From the gateway, if the call is routing via PSTN, you, you have to remember two things here. From the gateway, if the call is routing via PSTN, it's a completely port time. One. Another one. If you want to create a dial peer on analog and digital interface, next we'll be discussing about the digital interface. Any analog interface, example, analog means you have FXS, FXO, or any ENM comma, and also T1, T1 interface. Okay. <clears throat> if you are creating a dial pair over these interfaces, always post dial period. If the call is routing via PSTN, post dial pair. If you are creating a dial peer over analog and digital interface, FXO, FXS, T1, E1, then port style peer peer. Got it? That you have to remember. Next, VoIP dial peer, voice or IP. If the call is routing over the IP address, means from the gateway to ITSP or from the gateway to call manager, it's a VoIP dial peer. Next, VOFR, voice over frame relay. Nowadays, we don't have this one. Earlier, the frame relay we were using to connect from one branch to another branch. So if you have a frame relay technology, again, the frame relay is very old technology. After frame relay, the MPLS has come. Now the latest is the SD-WAN. Okay, so latest technology is the SD-WAN. So that's the reason we're not required to be create any frame relay. But if you were having earlier the frame relay, Okay, our Vivo ATM. So this is the very old technology. Before frame relay, ATM technology was there. Okay, so voice or ATM 
then you have MMYP, multimedia mail over IP. Actually, to get the mail over the MMYP, we will be using for the voicemail. Okay, now actually everything, it's an IP base. Okay, either you have pods or wire. Okay. Totally five LPS we have, but very famous is pods and wire. In interview, they'll ask about only this two LPS. <coughs> pods LPS and wire LPS. What is pods and what is wire? If the call is routing via PSTN or any analog or digital interface, it's a POST LPR. If the call is routing over the IP address or any ITSP, then it's a VoIP LPR. Got it? So that's about the dial peer we have. Now, how you can create a dial peer? Very simple uh, dial peer I'm going to show you because already we have a router, right? And we have, uh, we have a router and we have FXS ports. Okay, so two phones we have connected already on that router. One is a zero slash three slash zero. Another one is zero slash three slash one. This is the two FXS ports we have. Okay, for in exchange station. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, two FXS ports we have. Now I want to assign the extension for this one. For one, I'm going to assign 9001. Another one, I'm going to assign 9002 here, this one. Okay. So dial PS, I'm going to be clear. 9001, 9002 here. To assign this extension, we have to create what? Dial PS. Now, what type of dial PS we have to create here? It's a post dial PS. Why? Because unlock connection here, this one. Okay. So now I'm going to show you that one. How we can be created dial PS and how we can be assigned the extension for this one. Okay. Let me get into that. Okay. Okay, so show voice port summary. This is the ports we have 0 slash 3 slash 0, and this is and to verify the dial pair. Suppose if you have already created dial pair, show dial pair voice summary. Okay, so already we have some dial pairs here in this one. Okay, what I am going to do here, I am going to delete the dial pair. Okay, uh, let me delete the dial pair here. So to delete the dial peer, dial peer voice. So before to that, just give the no command. No dial peer voice 101, the tag number we have. This you can ignore it here, okay? And I'm just deleting the dial peer. 301, 201, 202. All right, there is a 2000, uh, no problem that 2000 dial peer. So now again, I'm verifying here. Show dial peer voice summary. Let it be that another dial peer. Okay. It's okay. Let's delete that also. Okay. All right. Now I have deleted all the dial peer. We don't have any dial peer here. Now I'm going to create a dial peer. Okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. Type dial hyphen peer. Dial hyphen peer voice and you have to give the tag number here this one this is what tag number one to these very tag numbers we can give any number you can give there is no question but each tag number it should be unique suppose you have created dial peer 10 it's not possible to create another dial peer 10 yes if you are something you are creating under the dial peer 10 it's going to overwrite okay it should be the unique here and this is not an number extension it's not an extension that's only the tag number okay so generally what happened you can give any number for an example for my number i'm going to give 9001 right the tag number also i'm going to give 9001 but this is not the number okay if you are getting confused i'm going to create 10 
tag number, then any number you can give randomly. There is no question that one. Okay. Then if you give the question, what type of dial pair you are creating now here? It's a pod dial pair. <clears throat> okay. Now one dial pair we have created with the tag number 10 here. This is the number, destination hyphen pattern. Here you have to give the number. Okay, how we can uh, give the extension or DN through the destination pattern 9. And this dial pair, under this dial pair, this is the number we have, where you want to apply. And the port number 0 slash 3 slash 0. This is the FX port, right? Under that, then you give no shutdown. That's it. See, I have created one dial pair with the tag number 10. Under this 10, we have given this extension 9001. And this we have assigned to the port number 0 slash 3 slash 0. Now you repeat, show dial pair voice summary. Now the tag number 10. And it's a port style pair. This is up. Operation is up. Destination number we have given 9001. Okay. And output station is up. And which is assigned to 0 slash 3 slash 0. Now, for that phone, we have assigned the extension what 3001. By sitting from here, I can test it. Okay. If anything you want to test it, type CSIM start 9001. If I enter now, if my configuration is good, that phone is going to ring. Okay. That phone is not ringing. That means. Maybe my issue is with from the configuration, but I don't have any issue with the configuration. Now, maybe it's not connected properly or, or that cradle has not kept properly. Keep the cradle properly. See, check it out that uh, the dial tone is getting or not. Okay, press that button. <laughs> Properly press button and keep it. Check with the both of you. Not that one, I think another phone. So that means uh, change the phone. Check it out, that phone is connected or not. <laughs> FX is what? Uh, FX is or FX what? Okay, change the interchange the cable at least. Okay, keep it properly now, the cradle. I'm going to check it out. No. Having some issue, having issue on the port here. I'm going to. I have another number. Okay, let me configure another dial pair. Okay, this time dial pair I'm creating. See, nine zero zero two is not a number. It's only the tag number here. Then the destination pattern is destination. Sorry, pattern is nine zero zero two. Then the port number I'm assigning to 0 slash 3 slash 1. Then you give no shutdown here. So now if you oh come on. Yeah. No, actually I wanted to verify the dial pair and suddenly it has come. Let's wait. All right. So dial pair voice summary. Now you can see 9002. It's a tag number and the destination. Why we give the same for easy identification? Okay. So this one. And now. Okay. So my phone is ringing. From here I'm testing. Actually the phone is ringing. But another port I'm having an issue. Now you can go to that phone and you can dial the number from there. Okay, uh, you can dial the number from one phone to another phone.
No, it it's having the issue issue right the the port issue you have it will not ring that one. Now got it? How you can be created dial peers? Yes. Suppose if you want to create outbound dial peer on the FXO. Now we have created dial peer on yes. FXS. FX also same commands you can. Hmm? Yes, the interface uh, for FX or maybe it's a, some other you have, then you can be changed that one. Yeah, yeah potential. Yeah, the, it's having no, it's having the port issue on that one port. Uh, one port is working, one port we don't have. On uh, do, 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 do. we on the other router we have FXS, yes, FXS or FXO. Okay, okay, then let's check it out on the other uh, okay. gateway. This is the one. Okay, let's see that call. Your dial peer voice summary. This is I'm into the another router here. Uh, before to that show voice port summary. Yes, we have FXS here also three slash zero three slash one we have so okay there is one number is configured on that number nine seven three eight zero two seven eight six four okay uh, but four has to be connected on that port uh, this is on zero slash three slash zero. From the right hand side, check it out. The dial tone is getting or not on the phone. No, only one phone you connect on the zero slash three slash zero. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Uh, phone is ringing. Uh, see, so yeah, there is another port also 0 slash 3 slash 1. Connect that phone. Something we have a number 7760, something we have number that one. Connect another phone. Okay, from the other phone, first phone you have connected, right? Or no, the, sorry, the latest phone you have connected, right? From there you dial 97 Okay, it's ringing, right? Answer the call. Answer, answer. Don't disconnect. Answer. Okay. Wait, wait. Sure. Call. Active. Voice. So, I'm verifying. Don't disconnect the call. Show. Uh, this is the command I'm executing here. This one. Show call active voice. Okay. You can see two call legs we have. Uh, then call duration we can see uh, one second show call active voice compact it's better you use this command in this we can see okay so if there is any active call when you are doing the test this is the command you can use. show call active voice compact comp means compact that one so here we can see that one from uh, ANS means from where you are calling. Calling from this number 7760662475. Originate ORG means called number. You have dialed 97380278864. Type tele. Means whenever in the analog, we get it tele here. This one. Suppose if the call is coming from your ISP, SIP, head dot 32 is something, there it will display void call. Okay, and also a display 
codec. Here we don't have the codec now. Can you see this one? Codec is what? None. Analog connection, no codec. Yes, it takes by default G.711. We don't have the multiple codec to configure here this one. So this is the callex. This is how we can be verified. Got it? Okay. So we can go with the show uh, call act call active voice also. It the gives in detail. Like <laughs> yeah, you can use this command. No, but uh, call volume is more. Uh, is it for the checking we are using? Or? Yeah, call volume. How how many calls will be there per second? Maybe two, three, four. That's it, right? Not like fifty hundred calls per minute, right? And you should be know, and uh, also you are getting the numbers, what number you are dialing, what from which number you are dialing that. <clears throat> okay, that's how to see here, you can see how many packets you are sending, how many packets you are receiving, which port I'm getting a call. In detail, this information we get it here. Okay, translate calling number. Okay, every information in detail about that call you'll be getting. How many packets sending, receiving, who is calling number, who is called number. Uh, see? Call number is this one nine seven three eight zero two seven eight six four. What DSP one is to two? It's taking how many callbacks? It's taking this one. But actually, is this show call active voice compact? This is the command you can be used. Okay, so remember this. All these commands you have to remember. Okay, there are few commands come this one. You have to remember few commands. It's a mandatory that because whenever to troubleshoot, you have to execute. Then also, if you go to the interview. There are different scenario comes that I'm sharing next in the set questions. And also when we discuss the mock interview. Okay. So when you are answering how you have to answer, what command you have to use in that command, what exactly you are verifying, why you are executing that command. So all these things will be discussed under the mock interview that one. Okay. Then you'll come to know that one. But now you remember show collective voice compact okay. with this command. It will be give the active calls. If there is any active call, through the gateway that you can be see in this one. Got it. So this is how we can be configured the dial peers. Got it. Show dial peer voice. You can give summary or only show dial peer voice. If you give it, gives the many information tag number and everything. Okay. So see many information we have. Or uh, show dial peer, uh, the tag number you can give. The tag number 10. And this another one. Okay, so maybe. 90 no. 97. Okay, so here I can give 97. About that 97. <laughs> what is the tag number? What is the destination pattern number we have configured? Complete information, what group, any core list, something you have configured, every information, we can get it. Got it? This is how you can be configure your dial peers. Not required. If you want, you can go with the debug also. But here, analog is not required the debug. So, still you want to disconnect the call first. Okay. Uh, debug. Uh, debug, debug voice. Okay, so I'll be enable some debugs and show it to you. Uh, before you enable the debug, what happened here? Whenever you enable the debug, what is the difference between show and debug? Show means which is already configured to verify that one or something activity, which is already connected, active call something, show command. Means. Show command generally to verify which is already configured Okay, or uh, which is already connected, something information, show command we use. Debug command, the live packet, what is coming, what is going, each and every packet it is going to capture. That is the debug command. And it's not recommended to enable the debug on on hours. On hours means in a 
busy business working hours so it's not recommended to be configured the debug debug is only because already there will be huge amount of calls will be working if you enable the debug what happened it will be collecting each and every packet who router when it is trying to capture every packet the cpu utilization and memory utilization of the gateway it goes high so that's the reason it's not recommended to be enable or uh, configure debugs on the on hours off hours you can do it yes you can do it the debug and on hours if the call volume is less how you can check it out the call volume is less or more so, 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 so call active voice compact right through that you can see whether how many calls are going or right so through that one that's the command that's the how. see they may can ask any type of question here this is how we can verify the active calls so, compact. So, compact. show call active call voice compact, compact. <laughs> okay so now debug you want to enable See what happened here. You had to save the logs. And now uh, it's very important again. Many times whenever you uh, troubleshoot on the gateway or when you are collecting the logs or debug logs you are collecting what happened. Debug if I am see whatever the screen I'm having maybe. <clears throat> maybe I'm not sure exactly the number. I'm giving example. Maybe 200 or 300 lines it's going to display. If the log is more than 300 lines, it will be over it. It will not come in here, this one. So always the best option to collect the logs from the gateway. So always you use the putty software, right? Okay, better to use the putty. So this is how you can collect the logs. Go to this setting on the top left, right corner. Go to the chain setting. Okay, then go to the logging here. Then select all session output. Then select browse where you want to save that logs here. Okay. I want to save this logs on the D drive 23. Okay. So what logs you are pulling? That name you give here. For what purpose you are pulling? Example. Dial peer debug. I'm collecting the dial peer debug. Save this one. Apply this one. Okay. This is what. Now I'm going to enable debug voice. Debug voice. Okay. Then you have an option here. Call. Okay. Debug voice call. One I can go. Okay. Then I'll go with the call here. This one. Now you go and dial the same number, 9738027864, okay? I'm enabling it. One second, one second. Call. Okay, 97380. 2786-4. Nothing is coming. Answer. Second. Okay. Uh, so whenever you enable the debug, I'm accessing this router remotely. Whenever you access the router remotely, what happened? The output, it will not display here, this one. For this one, you have to type terminal monitor. It's a mandatory whenever you access the router with the telnet or SSH, you want to see the output on in your screen. You have to type what? Terminal monitor. If you are not executing this one, yes, in the backend, the logs, it will be collect. Backend, the logs, it will be collect. But output, it will be not coming here. Again, you wherever you have saved that location, right? You can go there and you can be like, collect the logs here. Now, the command I'm going to use, uh, debug voice dial peer on. Okay, this is a debug I'm coming. This is for the FXS we have this one. Now you just go and dial the number. See here, dial digit by digit. Don't redial. Nine, seven, digit by digit you dial. Okay, I'm enabling here. Take the cradle. See, it has taken the cradle. Hold on, hold on. See, he has taken the cradle here. So he's dialing the number. Already started the number. Okay, see, 
it's getting with this one i'm getting what so here i'm getting the dial tone okay. now you dial the number again you do it that one okay dial the number 9738027864 now phone is ringing here see phone is ringing Answer the call. Answer, sir. Okay, answer the call now. Yeah. Okay, disconnect now. Disconnected. See, the call is disconnected. After collecting, use space all, use space all to undebug all. Okay, are the same command, no debug, whatever the command you have used, you can use. Then terminal, no monitor terminal monitor to get it after that terminal low monitor so it should not display anything now after this one what you have to do go to the settings change setting here go to the logging here select none apply here this one okay now if you go to your volume d sorry here this is my tile pier which i have opened So here you can see this one, the initial stage when you have enabled this command. So you are getting voice interface and you are getting a dial tone with this one. Debug dial PR. Voice. Yeah, debug voice dial PR all. Okay, so dial tone I'm getting here. So after this one he is dialing the number. Okay, what number you have dialed? That you have dialed that one. Okay. So here we can see calling number 9738027864. From there it's dialing. Okay. That is a calling number. And here we can see incoming dial PR 97. Then after where is the called number and number it comes. There it is there, sir. But no, it displays the number. Call number seven something. So this is digit by digit. First digit is seven. Then after second digit seven. Double seven. Now first is digit seven number. It's matching with the seven number. But still, second digit seven. Seven. No, seven. That is not second digit. Second digit is here, 77. Seven. Okay. So now after 776, seven, I think. See, seven, third digit, 776. Seven, it matches with single, single number. Okay. Next, 7760. Seven, six, 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 okay. Then, 77606. Seven, seven, then, 7060 Seven seven six zero six six two. So finally, it will be matching one number. What is the last number? Seven. 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 Huh? Seven. 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 See, finally, we we got seven seven six zero six six two four seven five. So with this delete, what is the del pair is matching? Here, del pair is matching ninety eight. Tag ninety. Okay, so on the gateway, if you go, show, show dial peer voice summary. So 98 is matching, right? For this number. Okay, this is the number we are telling. So what tag number is matching? 98 here, this one. So that is what dial peer 98 is matching here, this one. Then it will be sending the ringing signal. Okay, then after that, we'll be connecting the call. So this is how. We can be check it out. All the details will be there in this one. Incoming call, how we can we check it out? Got it. This is the example I'm showing how we can enable the debug and how you can collect the logs. So keep on when you go to the next topics, you have to collect the logs and you have to analyze so that. If there are more uh, 
small volume so at that time you use not like uh, this much of search at uh, the number uh, you can do it and you can filter it with the calling number and call number okay so now this is the simple uh, analog here my only agenda generally we will not enable this debug dial here why because we don't have any effects effects as many things on that one uh, my agenda is only uh, for you to be introduced that one, how we can collect the logs on the gateway. When you enable the debug, how we can save that logs on that one. That's it here. When we do the ISDN troubleshooting or set troubleshooting something there, obviously we had to collect here, we had to look into that one. So we'll be discussing that one. Sorry, the product chain logs for collecting the logs, we should have clear the memory of the router. What logs? It will be overwrite. <laughs> Not required to clear, it will be overwrite. From our side, we not do anything. Which one? No, no, automatically yeah, overwrite. For example, uh, the capacity has given an example 500 MB. If it is a full, old, it will be deleting the logs. Okay. So he's asking about this. Okay. Whatever the logs we have pulled in the memory of the router, logging memory, it will be there. For this one, you type show logging. Okay. See, here nothing is coming now here. Why? Because so only 4096 bytes means 4 kb data it can save this one but but this is the by default here okay and in production you have to increase the size of this one how to uh, re, uh, increase the size of logging that you can do okay so for this one what you can do you can just google it Increase the size of logging buffer in Cisco router. Okay, I'm going to give all change or increase Cisco router logging. Logging before buffer size. Maybe we get some document in the community. So someone the router has the flash memory, right? Can't use the flash memory to save log. It will be saving there only. Log buffer size. Just increase the log buffer size, you should be able. Okay, this is the command. Log buffer size. Mm -hmm. Okay, logging buffer size. <clears throat> okay. No. Okay. Yeah. This is all something number you can give big number. That many bytes yeah. is going to be saved that one. Okay. <laughs> this is how you can be logging buffer so you can be enabled that. Clear? Got it. So that's how you can be configure your logging and it will be overwriting. Or you want to be clear, clear logging, confirm. Then after show. Logging, nothing will become. If you want to clear it, this is how you can clear it. Or if you are not clearing at all, no problem on that. So that's how we can be configure our analog ports and dial PS. Any doubts, any questions before we stop? So the T1 